All right, so this is module two, lesson 26, homework help. There's a the homework. Here are some problems we did in class. It's a lot of work, but it's the same thing that we've been doing all this time. So let's get started. So it says estimate, then divide using standard algorithm and check. All right, so I'm going to go over to the side over here. I'm going to first round my divisor, and I'm going to count by two. All right, so now we have to look at our 45. First we look at the 4. Can we do the 4 divided by 20, 21? No, we cannot. So now we look at the 45. And that's 45 ones. Okay, so if we're doing 45 ones, we're actually doing it by 20. So we have 40. So let me do the 45. And we look at it and compare it to our skip count. But we also have to know that we're actually counting by 20. And we can see that it is close to the 40. So our estimation is going to say 40 ones divided by 20 equals 2 ones. So we have the 45 and 15 tenths inside and the 21 on the outside. You can automatically put your decimal right up above it if you want to do that. I know I'm going to have an answer right here because that's my 45. I'm going to go ahead and take the 2 and I'm going to multiply it times 21 and it gives me 42. 42 is less than 45 or equal to, that's less than. Alright, so now my 2 goes right there. Okay. I'm going to bring down the tenths. The one is in the tenths place. So now I have 31 tenths. And what's close to the 31 tenths is here. Excuse me, technical difficulty. All right, so the 31 is close to the 20, so we're going to do 20 tenths divided by 20 equals 1 tenths. So we're only going to subtract 21 here. I hope you don't need me to do the multiplication. 21 times 1 is 21. All right, and now we have the five, the hundredths place. Notice I said hundredths. I'm going to divide that by 20, and we think to ourselves, what is close to 105 in our skip count? And hopefully you see we have 100. So we're going to divide 100, divided by 20, and that is equal to 5 hundredths. We're going to check 21 times 5. And that gives us 105. So we have no remainder here. 
and this 5 actually I shouldn't put that 5 I should put this 5 right there so this 5 led to this 5 Okay, so the last thing I need to do is my check. Now, I know I told you in class to do it backwards. So I'm going to kind of show you what I mean by backwards. We're going to have a 2. We're going to have our quotient of 215. And we're going to multiply it times the 21. I'm going to put the 21 on top. Now, in my first line, it's really easy. We're going to do 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay? And if you look, here it is. All right. So the next one, we're going to multiply times 1. But remember, it's not 1. It's actually 10s. So we're going to do 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So we have 210, which is, is the same as 21 times 10. And the 1 here represents 10s, if we forget about the decimal. All right, next we're going to multiply times the 2. We have to put two zeros here because it's actually 200s without the decimal. We're going to do 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. And that's going to give us, when we add it up, the same answer as we or our dividend up here. The only thing we need to do is move our decimal two spaces. One, two. How do I know a two? Because there's two decimal spaces. All right, so that's my check. All right. Now we're going to go over here and do another problem. This time we're going to round to 60. So I'm going to do my skip counting by 6. Alright, and we're going to go and we're going to look really carefully and can we do 14 divided by 65? No. So it's actually going to be 145, 149. Okay, but Mr. Valdemar, there's a decimal. Don't worry about the decimal. So we're doing 149. I don't know why that five's there. Did I do so? Oh, I erased something by accident. All right. So which what number is closest? Let me do this in red here so you can see it. To 149. which of our skip counting is closest and hopefully you see it's 120 so we were going to do 120 divided by 60 and it is tenths and our answer there is two tenths how do you write two tenths? it's zero decimal two so when we get to our work over here, you should know that this 2 is going to go in the tenths place. And we're going to do a 0 there, just to keep the place and you can see the difference. All right. So now we're going to, hopefully that works. I have to first check it. So we're going to go 65 times 2 it's 130 that's close enough 
So we're going to have the 9 and the 1, and then we're going to bring down our 5, and we have 195. So we have 195. We're going to use our Scipion to help us estimate what's the closest one. Oh, we have a 180. So that's times 3. Uh, let me write it down. So we're going to have 180. And this is hundreds divided by 60. And that gives me 3 hundredths. So if our answer is right, it's going to go right there. Let's first check. 65 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1 is 19. So we do have a 95. And this becomes a 3. We subtract and we have no remainder. OK, for this one, we can do it uh, with the 65 on top. two digits and then our 23 on the bottom and don't forget the decimal here okay so we're going to do 65 times 3 195 then we're going to do a zero here because it's actually 20 and then we're going to add the 130 here. And that's going to give us our divisor, dividend, excuse me, from the beginning, 1,495. 1, and then we just put their decimal right there. We have two decimal places. All right. So today we learned that division expressions that have the same quotient and a remainder are not necessarily equal to each other. Explain how this is possible. Just a reminder, it's because when we have a remainder, that remainder is going to be equal to something else. If we think of it as a part of a whole, um, just looking at the problems above here, 23 is part of 65, or 65 is part of the 14 and 95. It's all parts of, I guess I'm explaining it a little too complicated for some of you. All right. Um, when we go on to the, the tenths place and the hundredths place, we can see that there is actually more to it. It's like if I said $25 divided by 5 gives me 5. Okay. That is correct, but if I said um, something that um, had five also, let's see. I thought I was onto something there. Thirty divided by seven is equal to four, and I would have a remainder of two. So if I go 4 times 8, I can get 36, and then I can add 2. And I can have 38. And if I do 38 divided by 8, my answer would be 4. And my remainder would be two as well. Oh wait, I did that wrong. Sorry about that. I'm still eating. I'm not concentrating. All right, so we have a 4 here, and we have a 32 here. We have 4 remainder 2 there. 
So what happens here is we actually have something called two eighths here, and we have over here, we have two sevenths here. So they're not necessarily the same. Two sevenths is not the same as two eighths. They're close, but not the same. So we could actually go on more to find out if there's more to it. So we could go with zero here and bring out, and that would be there. Okay, and we could keep on going. So just understand that we can keep going. It, so now we're going to use the equation on the left to solve the problem on the right, explain how you decide where to place the decimal. So as you can see here, the decimal is right there. If we look at this problem, our first question is going to be here. So our first answer was here. On this next one, our first answer is going to be here. So that means our decimal is going to be here. All right, so hopefully that helped explain it. I gave you the answer to A. Uh, let me explain it in words. Uh, put it a little bit bigger all right so in the first problem your first oops digit in the quotient is above the two which is in the tens place in the second problem the two is in the ones place so the one goes in the ones place. All right, that was a quick example of how to explain it with words. Let me go to the next problem. All right, so for homework you had A, D, so I'm gonna do just one more. Let's see which one's less like the other ones. I'll do C real quick. All right, so we're going to round to 40. I'll skip count. So we have the 70. And the 70 is closest to, it's kind of close to this 80, especially if we're, excuse me, it's a 77. My brain's not working today, sorry. And this is not working. There we go. It's supposed to be 77 here. So 
So let me put a 77 there. And that one is closest to the 80. So we're going to go ahead and use the 80. I know sometimes I say don't use it if it's over. It seems to be working a little bit better here. So 80 divided by two, 40 is 2, and that's 81s. So in our problem over here, we're going to have... We're going to use a 2, and we're going to put the 2 over here if it works. And we're going to have 38 times 2, and that's 76. It does work. Someone's going to say, why would you cross it out? So I might have to do that. Bring down the 1, and in this problem, we're going to have a 0 here. We're going to bring down 11, we'll bring down the 4, now we have 114, so you see I skipped one because we had a 1, a 0, so now we have 114 and we have to compare that and we have 120, so I'm going to go ahead and try the 120. 120 hundredths divided by 40 gives me third three hundredths. All right, I'm going to try it out though. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, it works out, I have 114, I'm going to minus that, I have a 0 here. So what happened here is we use the 0, so we have 0 tenths divided by 40 equals 0. So here's our answer right here, and the only thing we have to do is add a decimal. All right. Sorry about all the interruptions and all the problems. Bonus word. Vex. All right. Force be with you.